for me, I don't think we will come to this point that to have a machine that has intuition, uh, you know, self-awareness. Uh, this is also that to know that a robot knows that uh, I'm here, I'm just a machine, I, because the machine have no soul. The big difference, at least, is the question of beliefs. Uh, I believe that humans have a soul, have their own personality, unique. I believe in that. So when you believe in that, for me as a scientist, it's impossible to uh, believe one day that these functional tools will be similar to humans. They can look similar. They can be smarter in different tasks as us, for sure, and this very fast. But the rest is just fantasy. Myself, I don't worry, you know. I never worried when I develop technology that the own technology I am developing will be uh, dangerous. Because in my mind, you know, I think that we should develop things for the wellness of the humanity. The problem is that over time, people think that, OK, if I take an army of robots, and they can be walking, and they can be strong, and they are never tired, and you put them uh, big uh, guns, they can go ahead and suddenly uh, destroy anybody. So the problem is the usage of the technology. I don't think the problem is in what scientists are developing. We cannot go against the development of knowledge and science, but we can control what we do. We have always to think that, are we doing this for what? Is it for developing? For developing? No. Is for the wellness of humanity. So we have to think, why do we need these tools with the technology developed and try to be empowered by them and not destroyed by them. Well, if you ask me, uh, people who are working in the field are not too worried about it. It's a lot of hysteria. You know, we see, we think the popular media seems to portray uh, AI being smarter than it is. Um, what we see is that there is, or we know all along, it's been, there's a semblance of intelligence. So outwardly, it looks very intelligent, but this is in narrow areas. So if you look at driverless cars, Google is developing a car. Um, the car needs um, very detailed maps. It needs GPS. It doesn't drive in the way the humans drive. So it's intelligent in an outward way, but actually there is no intelligence behind it in a human sense. So how do I mean by intelligence? Uh, you and I, when we do something or we learn something, we actually understand uh, the task. We can do what we call transfer, task transfer. That is to say, if I learn something in this uh, area, in one area, if I understand what goes on behind this, I can use the same knowledge to solve a problem in a different area. Machines cannot do that today. So if you want machines to be truly intelligent, they have to get beyond just uh, mimicking intelligent behavior. They have to understand what they're doing, and uh, they have to uh, be aware of almost aware of what they are doing themselves, so as to self-monitor. So we call this metacognition, and machines can't do that today. Humans learn common sense through a lifelong process of uh, interacting with other people, experiences in the world. So until machines can be embodied with this kinds of ability to interact with the world, we are basically codifying things, uh, I call it, through a top-down process. We scour the whatever is written, but by definition, uh, whatever is written omits a lot of common sense. So we get common sense through people. We get volunteers to uh, give us uh, explanations of what happens uh, in behind the scenes in certain contexts. We do this through crowdsourcing. Uh, one example is a game. We created a game where we had volunteers play a game. And by uh, playing the game, they actually design game worlds. So it's quite interesting for the person playing the game. They, they are motivated to, de um, to design a game for, them, for other people to play. But by designing the game, we're actually tapping on their knowledge. They have to define what goes on in the game, uh, what uh, they're trying to achieve when a human does certain things. So this gives us background knowledge about our world, uh, what goes on in the world. 
And so crowdsourcing is one way we try to harvest common sense knowledge. Uh, other ways is that we tap on existing efforts from, by other people. So uh, there are people who knowledge engineer, so they actually sit down, lots and lots of people, and uh, these people actually then uh, use formal logic to uh, describe the world in logical terms. Well, uh, if you ask me, not in my lifetime. <laughs> it's, it's really a very difficult problem. There are many, many hard problems to be solved to attain uh, true understanding, to attain metacognition, that is to say to, uh, for machines to understand what they're doing. So um, I think probably you take, well the last time when AI sort of uh, was in its heydays, it was 50 years ago and people were very, very optimistic and said, we'll solve the problem in 10 years time. But they've soon realized uh, that the problem is a lot harder. And the more we understand human intelligence, which is what we are making good progress right now. Uh, so in neuroscience, we're learning a lot about how human intelligence actually works. But we are very, very far even then in understanding human intelligence. So um, to me, it's still a lot of hard problems for uh, machine learning, for uh, cognitive scientists to understand intelligence before we can achieve that. So I think, uh, yeah, the tendency is um, to rely too much on the app to help you make decisions, right? That to the extent that you may uh, forsake your own thinking, your own judgment, uh, and that is not good. I think uh, human beings have the innate capability to make decisions, to, uh, to be creative, uh, to think critically, and that aspect of it uh, needs to be constantly uh, reminded to ourselves that we don't ever fall into the temptation of taking, letting the machine take over our lives, so to speak. It is already happening. If you look at you know, how people behave on the road, they are constantly looking at their mobile device and taking you know, uh, information from there. So uh, I am actually quite worried that you know, this uh, bit about uh, over-reliance uh, is, is getting to be quite serious. Now this is again different from the super intelligence that we're talking about. We are not talking about the machine, you know, empowering, uh, overpowering mankind here. But in a more subtle way, we are seeing that we are, we are, we are becoming enslaved to the device, which is not a good sign. I think the question shouldn't be whether we should be slowing down or speeding up. Because I think uh, technology, whether it's AI technology or other technology, has always the good side and the bad side. I think uh, the government, some country, uh, the government uh, encourages stem cell research. Okay? But they will not do embryonic stem cell research. You see the difference, right? Uh, because the latter has uh, moral and ethical implications. I think th those technologies are good in their own way, but we should also uh, inform our students uh, to think uh, of the ethical, moral aspects of uh, the technology. I think the onus is on us as human beings to uh, exercise discernment, to be able to develop applications of that technology in a way that is um, socially and economically beneficial and not uh, you know, run into the danger of uh, the moral and ethical uh, threats. So I think we should uh, be discerning and we should not uh, you know, let the um, bad aspects of AI hamper us from uh, developing those technologies.